Section 8.6, Proportions and Similar Triangles. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use proportionality theorems to calculate segment lengths. So far, we've proven that different figures are similar, and we've shown how we can prove that triangles are similar, but we're going to talk about some different theorems that have to do with triangles and other ways um, we can show that segments are proportional to one another. Our first one is the triangle proportionality theorem. And this theorem states that if a line parallel to one of the sides of the triangle intersects the other two sides, then it's going to divide the sides proportionally. So what we're able to say then is that RT over TQ should be the same ratio as RU over US. What's also neat about this theorem is that the converse is also true. So if I notice that the sides are proportional, I can say that those lines are parallel. So it's another way that we can show that lines are parallel. Let's see a couple examples. Our first example here asks us to find the length of NR. And using our triangle proportionality theorem, I know that I can set up a proportion in order to solve this. So I'm going to go ahead and say MN over NR should be equal to MP over PQ. And as we substitute those values in, and we say 9 over X, because that's the length we're trying to solve for, is equal to 6 over 4. From here, we can cross multiply in order to solve. And we will find that we get 6X is equal to 36. And when we divide both sides by 6, we're going to find that X is equal to 6. So this means that the length of NR is equal to 6. We can also use this with the converse as well. And here we're asked to determine if PQ and MN are parallel. And I'm given the side lengths. If I say that the side lengths are proportional, then I can say that those lines are parallel. So my proportion that I will check is 54 over 42. And I'm going to set that equal to 36 over 48. When I cross multiply, if I find that what the products are are equal to one another, then I can say that those, those lines are parallel because the sides are proportional. So I will take 54 times 48 and check that with 42 times 36. 54 times 48 will result in 2,592. And when I multiply 42 times 36, the product is 1,512. And these are not equal to one another. So we will say that PQ is not parallel to MN. It's not parallel. Another theorem we have is if you have three parallel lines that intersect two transversals, then they divide the transversals proportionally. So here AB over BC will be equal to DE over EF. Here's an example of where we might have this. And in this case, we need to solve for the missing measure. In order to do that, we can set up a proportion. So I will go ahead and say X over 28 will be equal to 25 over 30. In order to solve, we'll need to cross multiply. And we end up with 30x is equal to 700. When I divide both sides by 30, we'll find out that x is equal to 23.3 repeating. So we can say that GH is equal to 23.3 repeating. One last proportionality theorem that we have has to do with if you have a triangle and some sort of ray that bisects an angle. So you're going to see a ray and you're also going to see these congruent marks saying that it's an angle bisector. If that's the case, then we'll have this ray bisecting, or sorry, dividing the triangle up proportionally. So we can say that DA over AC will be equal to DB over BC. Here's an example of where we might have this. And it's asking us to find the value of x. And we've seen similar problems to this before, where I'm going to have to come up with some sort of value 
for this other segment. And we can do that if the whole is 21 and this is x, we're just going to say that this is 21 minus x. And that allows us to set up our proportion. So we can say x over 16 is equal to 21 minus x over 12. When we cross multiply in order to solve, we have 12x is equal to 16 times 21 minus x. We have to distribute in order to simplify, and we'll have this be 336 minus 16x. We still have 12x on the left hand side of our equation. I'm going to add 16x to both sides. And we have 28x is equal to 336. And so x will be equal to 12. Another way I like to think of this is that you have this ray separating up the triangle. And you have one side, and then here's your other side, or other piece of the triangle. And that's where your proportion comes from. So one side of the triangle is one ratio, and the other side of the triangle is the other ratio. Three short theorems and some problems that we practice with, and that's really all that's to this last section of chapter eight. So that means it's time for a joke. And our joke for today is, what did the grape say when the elephant sat on it? Nothing, it let out a little wine. <laughs>